Okay, welcome back to another uh, one of Frodo's journeys. This might be part 17, I have a feeling. And uh, we are now at uh, the campsite. At Parth Galen, where uh, we're eventually going to head over there. That, over that place over there, is uh, Emon Muil which is the mountains that we have to climb over in order to get to Mordor and to the uh, the dead marshes, which we'll come to a little bit later. We're going to head that way shortly. But first of all, we have to have a look around here because quite a lot happened in this area in the Fellowship of the Rings, the last chapter of the Fellowship of the Rings. And uh, here we have um, the, the Argonath and uh, somebody popped a nice comment into the bottom of the last video to explain these things. So Elendil and Anorian were the two kings mentioned there. And, uh, sorry, Isildur and Anorian. And Isildur was king of Gondor, even though he was Elendil's heir. Elendil was uh, king of Arnor in the north, and Isildur was king of uh, Gondor. And so he'd been king of Gondor quite a while uh, when the battle happened. So... Uh, read the comment in my last post. I wish I could remember the name of uh, the person who posted it, but we might pop it in as a little bit of text and we'll thank that person in the video. So here we go. What we have to do is have a look around here. So the, the party camped uh, and then they had to sit and think about what they were going to do next. I'm just inside uh, Drongo's head here just to see if uh, that works better for everyone. And uh, so Frodo asked if he could uh, go off for an hour and have a think about the decision. Of course, he had already made his decision, uh, but he was trying to figure out how he was going to tell everyone else what was happening. So uh, he wanders off, and he wanders up here somewhere. There's a bunch of orcs around here, but they're not going to annoy us. And if we go up here, we will see the boats. Remember those boats we had in Lorien? Well, here's the boat, the boat that was left. Remember, there were three boats. Uh, and by the end of this little segment, Frodo's taken one and headed over there. Uh, the uh, the second one is where... Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's not spoil anything too much. But remember, everybody, this video contains spoilers. If you haven't read the book, go down to the description. Get yourself a link to Amazon, buy the book, read it, and then come back and watch the videos. And then you'll be able to follow Frodo's journey in Lotro. And by no means is this a definitive version of everything, but uh, this is Lord of the Rings. So Frodo wanders up here and uh, is having a good look around and having a think and trying to decide what he wants to do. And he is accosted at some point by Boromir, who also wanders off from the camp. So Boromir won... Ooh, there's some, there's some stuff. We might have that. Rittermark Silver. So Boromir wanders off from the camp and... Um, he accosts Frodo somewhere around this area, perhaps. And uh, and so Boromir tries to take the ring off Frodo. There's a big there's a big stone table. I'm thinking that might be all the way up here. So let's go and have a look and see if we can find it. A, a large stone table that Frodo and Boromir dance around, and I'm sure it must be in the video in, in the video in the game because uh, they've managed to get everything else brilliantly well done. Amon Hen, here we are, we're up in the heights of Amon Hen. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit in a second as well. But um, let's see if we can find the stone table around which Frodo and Boromir dance in the book. And it's up here somewhere. I'm, I'm sure it will be. There's some more of that stuff. Let's not collect anymore. So Frodo's... Um, wandering up towards the peak of Amon Hen. And he's looking for some way, some courage to tell everybody what's going on. And uh, he gets accosted by Boromir. And I'm not seeing this stone table. There's a big stone, lump of stone here. But maybe um, we're not going to get the stone table. We'll keep going up and see. Uh, orcs have moved in, you see. And there's a statue that's fallen over there. As you can see, the... There's a lot done very nicely in the game. 
Beautiful scenery, lovely sky. Nice day today. And so we'll wander on up to Amon Hen because as uh, Boromir tries to take the ring off Frodo, essentially cut a long story short, Boromir tries to persuade Frodo to give up the ring. Frodo says, uh, no way, Jose, because he's already too addicted to the ring to give it up. And uh, he uh, eventually puts on the ring in order to escape from Boromir. And uh, Boromir loses track of him and Frodo runs all the way up to the top of Amon Hen wearing the ring and he comes up and uh, when he has the ring on he's able to see quite a lot from this old seat of the old kings of Gondor where they would come to have a look out on their kingdom so we're going to go up to Amon Hen and see what we can see and uh, just see exactly how far up we can get the orcs have taken it over by the looks of things since everything happened. I'm just trying to figure out exactly where the, the seat was up here. I would suspect there'll be a way up to it. Here it is. I'm not seeing the stone table. Can we see a stone table anywhere that the, the argument may have happened around? But anyway, up we go, and we're going to get up to the top. There was another peak there. We're going to have, we'll have a look at it while we're at things, while we're at it. But Frodo runs all the way up here, and he sits down and has a look around, wearing the ring, which is never a wise thing to do when Mordor is so close. So here's the, here's the seat at Amon Hen. Okay, and um, the kings of Gondor, Gondor could sit here. And look back at the Kingdom of Gondor. Here's the Great River coming out after the Falls of Roros. We should see the Falls of Roros down here, but we need to be careful. We don't want to fall over. Oh, we fell over. Let's uh, get back up again. Um, I don't know if we can actually see Roros anywhere here easily. Ah, there they are. There's the Falls. So the Falls of Roros and then the rivers, the Great River running into Gondor. Let's get up onto our high seat again. And uh, as you can see, running at head height is a bit tricky for a hobbit. <laughs> Everything looks very, you're very low down. But anyway, those are the rivers running into this. Is the uh, the Entwash coming into the uh, into the Great River, and the Great River continues down to Gondor. Luckily, we do not travel by river anymore. We don't have to swim that way. But um, there you go. That's interesting. So. Uh, that's Gondor. We can look out in other directions and of course Frodo looks to the east and uh, he is perceived by the great eye, by the uh, eye of Sauron and just in time he takes off the ring before Sauron, Sauron can um, pinpoint his location. He takes off the ring, makes up his mind, he says he's going to head to uh, put the ring into the fire all by himself and he's not going to take any of his friends into danger which is very nice but also he doesn't want anybody else to steal the ring so there's there's these motives for Frodo he's already uh, showing his selfishness for the ring he doesn't want to give it to Boromir he uh, essentially fights to keep it he is now essentially making the decision that he's going to leave the fellowship and have nobody else come with him again a very selfish decision that, uh, that he makes, and um, it may be that uh, Tolkien was pointing out to us that uh, Frodo at this point was selfishly hanging on to the ring. If, if Frodo could lose all the people that came along, then uh, no, no, none of the Fellowship, none of the Fellowship would be able to take the ring off him. So there's interesting stuff going on there you might think that it's a selfless decision Frodo is trying to protect his friends but I think there is that double motivation there and it's worth it's worth remembering that Frodo um, could well be making that choice he's leaving his friends behind because he doesn't want any of them to steal the ring he's also he also makes it from uh, he, he, he justifies this to himself as well in saying that what effect is the ring going to have on the other members of the fellowship uh, and, he, and he, there is the fear that 
uh, someone's going to take it off him. But uh, he justifies this thinking in very Hobbit fashion, saying that he is going to save them rather than he's going to protect the ring and stop anybody taking it off him. Now, when we do a couple of other journeys, we're going to start the other journeys here. So, for example, uh, this is pretty much the end of Boromir's journey. So we might just go and cover all that in this video. And then we will uh, not have to deal with uh, the end of Boromir's journey. So Boromir, uh, eventually the rest of the fellowship at the campsite realized that Frodo and Boromir are missing. And they set out to look for them. Where are the stairs? Did I miss the steps? Must be right here somewhere. There they are. Uh, and uh, Aragorn comes across Boromir. And Boromir is uh, saying that he saw Frodo, but then he didn't see him, etc. And Aragorn sends Boromir off to reel in Merry and Pippin and Sam who have run off in a completely different direction or Merry and Pippin anyway and so Boromir runs off to try and find Merry and Pippin and, and he goes this way because Merry and Pippin went the other direction nobody had known where Frodo went of course and Boromir runs all the way up here and eventually hears the sound of orcs chasing the hobbits and he goes up to protect the hobbits from the orcs so he's running up this way <coughs> we have a bit more swimming to do by the way sorry about that anyway we'll nip up and see where Boromir meets his doom and quite a lot of the orcs meet their doom as well because it's not just here's a few orcs that you could we could beat up if we wanted to but we're not going to uh, they're all too low level for us uh, to really justify beating up but anyway Boromir runs up here to protect Merry and Pippin and when we start Merry and Pippin's journey we will start from up here somewhere now, let's see if we can find it it's called Dead Orc Glade or something which is a good name for it really because it's full of dead orcs and um, it was Boromir's last stand let's see if it's up I think it's just up here there's a big tree looks like a good marker for something and let's see I have to pop the map on just to see uh, let's see get it in see if I can that's it we're going to go north that way it's just down here So, um, there we are. There's the dead orcs. This is the... These are all the orcs that Boromir killed. And then Boromir himself was eventually shot with enough arrows to kill him. Great scene in the movie as um, Boromir is killed by the arrows. And then the orcs, the remaining orcs, pick up Merry and Pippin and run off with them. Okay, so meanwhile, Aragorn nips up to the seat Nam on Hen and has a think. And then here's the Boromir blowing his horn and comes rushing down and finds Boromir dead by the tree amongst the dead orcs. And then he's joined by Gimli and Legolas. And meanwhile, in amongst all that distraction, Frodo has nipped down back down to the boats and he's taken one of the boats and he's headed off the shore. But Sam twigged what he was going to do. And so Sam followed him and jumped into the water and Frodo had to come back and fetch him. I'm not quite sure if that's exactly how that happened in the book. But anyway, Sam Sam cap, uh, caught Frodo before he leaves and um, the, Sam's wise old head prevailed and got uh, Frodo to come back. They took some supplies with them and they head off in the boat to... Um, and I'm going to jump in the water here and we're going to swim over there. But we're going to make the swim as short as possible by getting all the way down to where the boats go in. So the, uh, there's one boat left. They came from 
Rivendell in three boats. Frodo and Sam take one. Boromir is set off to float uh, in another. Oh, this is a bit weird. I'll just get out of this. Swimming in head mode doesn't work. So, uh, Frodo and Sam heading over towards the Emmon Mule so that they can climb up over this maze-like set of mountains and make their way into Mordor via the Dead Marshes. At least that's the plan. Doesn't entirely come to fruition. Meanwhile, back on the shore, uh, the other members of the Fellowship are gathering themselves together after the death of Boromir. They decide not to follow Sam and Frodo. Decide that the uh, the quest is now in the hands of Frodo, and that so they bury they send Boromir over the falls in a boat as a way of burying him, and they head off after the orcs to try and rescue Merry and Pippin. There you go. That's the breaking of the fellowship. Well, a lot happened in that chapter. There's quite a lot to talk about there. And uh, if we can manage to swim across here in the next two minutes, we'll end the video. So, unfortunately, the game does not allow us. At least I haven't tried it. The, I haven't tried all of these little coves, but I'm pretty sure we cannot get over these mountains. So we're going to have to pick up the story on the other side of the Emin Mule in the Dead Marshes. And we're going to pick it up with another character who's a bit taller, actually. So we'll do the head, uh, the head view, the uh, the first person view of that character so that um, it's not so obvious that we don't have a hobbit with us and we'll be able to travel the rest of the journey of Frodo in that other character. How are we doing for time? 17 minutes 23 seconds. This is a long video. But we'll get there. We'll get there. We're going to just get over into these trees. And that's as far as we can go, actually. So maybe there isn't any point doing the swimming. But we'll just... We'll complete the journey as far as we can. And somehow Frodo and Sam climb up into these mountains. I mean, it looks like there's a path there. But I don't think there is. I might investigate it when I'm offline. But uh, when we're not making a movie about this. And we'll see if we can get up over here. But I don't think there's any way to get over this in the game. And um, there's quite a lot of... There's quite a lot of land there, but we'll pick it up in the Dead Marshes on the other side of the Emin Muil. So anyway, while we're uh, swimming in here, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll definitely um, be picking this up again soon. I, I know a lot of people were really interested in the last video we did, so uh, thanks for that. And I hope... Um, Hope everybody's enjoying it. I mean, in some ways, it's just a little, little stroll in Middle Earth and or swim. <laughs> Done a lot of swimming recently, uh, and just looking around at the sights. If we look left here, uh, we can still see the Argonoth. Oh, we're swimming that way now. We can still see the Argonoth up there, and uh, I'm on the hen. We should be able to see. Is that it? Somewhere over there. This is another watchtower of Gondor. And we're going to get out of the water down here in a minute. And we'll have crossed the lake and we'll have gone as far as we can with this part of the journey. So yes, what were the differences between the book and the film in that s those scenes of the breaking of the fellowship? Well, uh, I think that uh, the the Sam Frodo encounter on the lakeside is a bit different. I don't think in the book uh, Sam certainly didn't. I don't think he really jumped into the water and nearly drowned and stuff, and so Frodo didn't have to dive in and get him, which is what seems to happen in the movie. And then um, 
has uh do we get I mean I think that the death of Boromir was done very well uh and he was shot by arrows Merry and Pippin tried to fight the orcs but the orcs wouldn't fight them and then eventually picked them up in the book uh, I don't remember Merry and Pippin really doing much fighting in the movies but maybe they did and then we have uh, but otherwise I think it was all pretty much as written in the movie so it was really I mean in the end the movies did a really good job of telling the story but I don't think there's any way for us to get up here and uh, we're going to end the video just here Frodo and Sam are heading up here and unfortunately we can't go that way I will try a little bit offline uh, you know when I'm not making a, a video and see if I can get around there but I don't think we can so uh, I might try that now but in the meantime I'm going to call this video to an end we are here at Emin Muil and we've left the rest of the fellowship behind and we're about to strike our way into Mordor that's coming next thanks for watching thanks for staying the trip and um, I hope everybody's had a really nice Halloween we've uh, uh, the kids are all trick-or-treating around here at the moment because yesterday the weather was terrible so hopefully they're not gonna <laughs> I don't have anything to give them so I hope they don't knock on the door anyway uh, best of luck see you soon